an hour to an hour at the most. No worries. That's fine, but uh, AJ, thank you for coming on. It's appreciated. I, I'm sure you're a busy person like everybody else. <laughs> um, you're a busy man. You've got various things on the go. You're a family man, so mm. it is appreciated that you take the time out of your day to pop on and speak to myself across the other side of the world. Yeah, that's uh, my pleasure, man. First of all, though, how are you doing? How am I doing? I'm doing great. Lots of projects, always keeping busy. Uh, me and my wife, we have, uh, uh, we kind of work in the same field, you know, it's all artistic. So like, she's a photographer, a videographer, editor, and and I'm starting to mix movies as well. So like, yeah. so it's always, always kind of, and she, she had the idea of creating like a podcast here in our studio. So like, I'm like, okay, let's, let's try that. So like, we're, we try everything, man. We got to, you know what I mean? Like family of five now. So we just yeah. got to keep uh, reinventing ourselves. Yeah, that's fine. Well, what we'll do is we'll go right back to the very beginning. So mm -hmm. uh, where were you initially brought up? And when you were younger, were you into music as a young child? Oh, 100%. So I was raised in Brazil, born and raised there, and my dad was a musician, an amazing accordion player and organ and stuff. So I grew up not only around music, but around parties. And like my dad like uh, used to play for this um, famous like 60s band in Brazil. And they were kind of the pioneers of like rock and roll, like the early stages of rock and roll in Brazil. So uh, every Friday night, it was like a big party at my house with all this crazy jazz musicians and like all the families would come, you know what I mean? So like it was every Friday night. So I, like my earliest memories is my dad partying and, and jamming all night. Like, you know, so yeah. so it, there was no other way. Like, I don't know, like even though like we're, we're five brothers and sisters, and I was the only one that actually caught on, like that, followed the music path. Everybody else yep. does their own thing. Uh, but I was always in, like, I was always like, oh my God, you know, like I was always up late and uh, loved the nightlife and started playing piano really early. Yep. And, and, you know, but even though I was a rock kid, like I was a rock and roll kid, but yeah. at the same time I played piano. So like I played piano different, you know what I mean? Because that, there was a little more attitude, you know? Yeah, so I'm assuming you obviously it's maybe a different approach to the instrument compared to what you would maybe normally have. Yeah, a hundred percent. And even like because I, I, I started playing classical, and even the way they dress, like all the kids are all like with bow ties and super proper, and and I would rock up with like an Ozzy Osbourne kind of full of yeah. devils and stuff, and they would try to try to make me conform but i'm like no that's this is the way i feel good you know what i mean yeah and then so when i walked up on stage because i, I always had recitals and stuff walking up was always this like i could feel the energy like what's this kid doing you know like long hair and stuff but then once i started playing and so into it because i loved playing and performing and stuff people started to get emotional and then clapping and standing over it like so yeah. from an early age like I, I've, I've always loved performing but I never felt like intimidated or kind of weird like I I was like I'm ready for it you know what I mean like yeah. so I yeah so, so it, it sounds like there was a definitely a lot of musical in, uh, influences from your your parents or from your father from yeah. a very very young age but mm -hmm. um, do you remember what age you were when you discovered your own style of music that you enjoyed yourself? Uh, I'm still <laughs> I'm still figuring it out, you know, like it's a, it's an ongoing process, right? It's not like a, something that just kind of hits you because but what, was there was there a was there a maybe like a band? Yeah, or a, or well, a musician well, maybe, that, that you discovered? Yeah, so the first the first band that like maybe buy records and just kind of like, you know, those big LPs, yeah. you know, like, with, like with, you know, um, it was Iron Maiden. Like I was, I was really into Iron Maiden, yeah. and and they were my first idols. And from there, so so then I started really heavy metal, kind of was my thing, you know, like all the heavy hitters from the 80s, 90s, you know, and even like like really dark stuff. Even though I was always like a happy kid, but like I loved like ah, rocking out, like Creator. And, uh, Metallica was a little too washy for me, you know what I mean? Like, so I, I you like would, Slayer, Metallica, you know what I mean? Like, I was going to say, um, 
being from Brazil, I'm assuming Sepultura. Sepultura was later. Sepultura was much later. Like my upbringing was way before Sepultura. So like I didn't really, but yeah, but once they came out, I was like, yeah. But then like the band that kind of, and then at the same time, Michael Jackson started to, to be really popular. And I started kind of like, wow, this is cool too. You know what I mean? So I was, I was very, very eclectic. You know what I mean? Is that a yeah. word? Eclectic? Eclectic. Yes. Eclectic, yeah. So I was always uh, open, you know? So I started doing jamming to Michael Jackson, trying to do the moves and stuff. And and then but what really made me want to be, because I thought that they were like unreachable. Like So it's just something yeah. you you look up to, but you don't even want to try to get there because it's so impossible. And I didn't even think about me being a musician and an artist. But Bon Jovi was the one that hit me the most. You know, Bon Jovi yeah. was like, what the? Can we curse or no? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like the first time I heard, I think it was like, you give love a bad name, played on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, it was the most unique sound I had ever heard. It was like energetic, it was like powerful. It was like, you know, like it just made me want to march around and like, yeah. And then I started like following them and 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 because I, I couldn't even speak English back then. So like I, I had to translate. I had to have a friend of mine translate. That was way before Google and translate. Yeah. And so like you needed to rely on people that spoke English. So and then I started reading the lyrics and uh, like connecting with everything. And and then it made me want to write and want to uh, sing and, and, and be a professional musician. My dreams started there, like, you know? Yeah. I've got a good story for you because Iron Maiden was one of my first bands that I yeah. discovered that I really enjoyed. And, and to this day, I still I still like everything about them. I, I like the songwriting. I like the whole image. I like the album covers. It's, it's like, so cool. They're so good. But a funny story about, about them. So when I was... I'm in my 40s now. So when I was... In my teens and early twenties, I went to Portugal mm. on holiday, on vacation, and went got a villa um, about a half hour drive outside of Faro. Mm -hmm. It was this wee town in the middle of nowhere, mm. and the first night we got there, obviously settled into the villa, and we decided let's just walk into the town just to see what's there because there was really nothing there. It was in the middle of nowhere. Wow. We walk up, and it's, it gets to like a T-junction where the road goes left or right. Uh -huh. So we're like, well, let's flip a coin, you know, heads <laughs> we go left, tails we go right. Uh -huh. We ended up going right, and there was there was only two two bars in the town. And uh, we obviously, one of them was on the left and one was on the right. We went to the one on the right, and the whole night they'd said to us, don't ever go to the other bar because it, it's it's trouble. So of course the next night that's, we'll, that's the one you wanted to go. The next night we we're like, let's go left. We want to see the, this bar. Uh -huh. We walked into the bar and it turned out that it was the bass player from Iron Maiden owned the bar. So oh, it was his bar. Hell so wow. it was it was a heavy metal bar that's and it so was cool. run by his best friend who was a roadie for them in the eighties who retired and he was from Portugal. So he'd said to him, do you want to just run my bar? So he said, that's fine. So every big rock band that came on tour through Portugal stopped by this bar. So oh, it, it's so world cool. famous. And it was just, we discovered it in the middle of this wee town, in the middle of Portugal, in the middle of nowhere. That's, that's awesome, man. It's like, what's the chances of that happening? I know, that's so weird. So AJ, we've, we've spoke about, um, bands that you were originally discovered do you remember what the first music album was that you bought with your own money Ooh. I think it might have been Black Sabbath man like the one that, that has the, 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 the skull and the, the bolt yeah. like burning I don't even remember what, what the name of it was but yeah I think it was Black Sabbath and what, what about your first concert? First concert, okay. That was that was that was a really cool one because I was only nine and back in the eighties, man, Brazil, like 
we they were so inappropriate with like when it comes to to kids and stuff like that they were like they were just nuts crazy like there was no censor there's no minimum age rated r or whatever we were exposed to all kinds of shit yeah and so it was rocking rio one in 85 yeah. i was nine okay. and the minimum age to get to this concert was 10 10 years old was like this you know the, the cutoff time yep. but i was even lower than that i was nine and they let yeah. me in no problem you know what i mean so of course i was with my parents but so uh iron maiden was gonna play yeah and so like when i heard that they were gonna play i was like please 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 take me there and we lived like about five and a half five and a half hours away from rio and so it was a whole family thing like an endeavor yep. like everybody just kind of went just so i could go see iron maiden but that day was the day that they packed up. It was the record um, uh, uh, of um, attendees, and it was um, it was Iron Maiden, right? Mm -hmm. uh, before them, was which was my first time seeing them. Was uh, White Snake? Look how yep. cool the lineup was ridiculous. White Snake opened for Iron Maiden, and then to close the night off, Queen. So yeah. those are the three. That, yeah, that, I think was that not. It was ridiculous. Was there not like two hundred thousand people at that? One hundred fifty thousand people that that day. Yeah, it's crazy man. Yeah, because I think I made them were doing. Was sex. that not them doing their? Um, that must have been right in the eighties. Was that like around the Seven Sun sort of tour or? Um, maybe I think it was maybe Power, Power Slave. Slave. No, I think it was Power Slave. Right, but it was, it was forty thing, years ago. Eddie, like the whole thing, like. It was just and I started when I when when the show started. I was right up front, like in my in my dad's kind of yeah uh, shoulder, and then they started like throwing stuff at me and stuff. Like it was kind of a wild, like you know, like it wasn't super friendly, you know, like and my mom got pinched, like get the fuck out of the way, yo, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was kind of so. Then we moved back, and I and I watched from 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 uh, farther out. But but I remember, man, like that was the first time I saw people pretty much having sex. Like there were little tents and people getting drugs and stuff like that. Crazy. Like I remember, I still remember seeing them smelling the weed and stuff like that. Yeah. So you're obviously you're, you're right into your music from a very young age. What age were you when you you're playing piano? So what what age were you when you first started your your first band or joined your first band? uh really early really early because since i was like i was pretty much like i got good really fast uh when i was a kid because i started really early and so i was one of the main keyboard players in my town you know my town was like what about like back then probably about two three hundred thousand people um but i was my dad was always like always bought the coolest keyboard you know what i mean like i was yeah. always like he had some money, so like I, I was privileged enough to always have like good gear, and I'm, I'm still like, I, still to this day, like I, my gear is always amazing. Like I love gear, you know. So I started probably 13, um, uh, 13, 13 is when I had my first. It was kind of like a duo. Me and my cousin would just sing and play keys. Is like one of those keyboards that had the rhythm and stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Pretty cheesy. Uh, but then, like, I joined my first rock band, probably, like, 14, 15. Right. And, and then I played through, like, I was playing keyboard first. And then when I was, like, about 17, 18, something like that, I started singing at a Bon Jovi tribute band. And that was, right. like, for the longest time, I, I migrated to singing and playing acoustic guitar. And that was that was my career for, for, for years in Brazil. That's how I was... I was you know, making my money and, and, and yep. doing my thing. So at what stage did you move from Brazil and end up in America? Uh, so that was after, right after college. I graduated from uh, civil engineering in Brazil, which is kind of my family business, but, but I was never into it. I never really liked it. So for me, the only way for me to get out of the, uh, to not feel any pressure to join the business, join the company and stuff, was to get the fuck out of there. So like, I'm going to America. I'm going to completely like 180 in my life, you know. Yeah. So, so yeah. So I sold everything I had, which wasn't much, you know, like just kind of like a car, motorcycle, 
and and then I I moved. I was uh, 23 to 24 back in 2000. Okay. And I came here to study um, study music, and it was only going to be for a year. But then, of course, I never left. You know, 24 years ago. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I started uh, learning <coughs> voice first, and then in school I learned how to record because, like, the recording program was really good. You know, and and the head of the department was like a, this crazy guitar player. And when I was doing like some, it was some elective class that it was in the studio. So like, I fell in love with the studio environment and stuff. And yeah. but I was I was afraid that that was gonna take me away from my path, which I thought was gonna be just singing and songwriting. Mm -hmm. But then having a talk with him is like, it's like no man, this is actually gonna make you a better singer and a better yeah. everything, because now you can. You can do it yourself. You don't depend on some producer always. Like you can yeah. do it yourself. So, so I'm like, oh, that sounds good. So then I came back to school. I spent six months saving up. Came back to school to do a recording program, and that's when I really found myself. I'm like, fuck, this is amazing. Started writing more and and mm -hmm. and, and uh, arranging and recording and stuff. And that's when started my recording, my producer and mixer career right there. Yeah. So. I know, like, with previous episodes of this podcast, I normally ask the people that come on, how did we first meet? How do we know each other? Obviously, we are different because we've only just met. Um, but similar to when I was speaking with Tommy, I'd say to Tommy, you know, how did I discover Tommy? And it was obviously through Duke Cartel, which was mm -hmm. the same for yourself. Yeah. Um, but what prior to Duke Cartel, what were you, were you playing in... And other bands before you met those guys. Um, when I met when I met them, I wasn't playing with anyone. Like I had I had my school band and stuff, which doesn't really count. But I had just because every five five years, like I kind of get tired of where I am and I need to make a big change. So like I kept going back to Brazil and then coming back here. So I had just come back to LA, and I uh, like I, I, we had a common friend Bryce and. I went out with Bryce one night and I saw them perform. I saw Duke Cartel, right. and I remember like it was it was very strong because I don't really feel that way uh, about any bands or whatever. Usually I go, I see, and like okay, this is cool, this is not. Yeah. But when they they were playing at the uh, Hotel Cafe, which is a super cool venue uh, that has a piano on stage, it's like an mm -hmm. acoustic kind of venue, and and they were doing like a three, like I think it was a three piece, and I think J Bo. J Bro must have been on percussion or something like that. But I remember seeing three people here jamming, singing and stuff. And and it impressed me how raw and how cool, like there was a coolness thing. And yep. they're all kind of my age, you know? So like I felt instantly attracted to the sound and to, to the whole thing. And I kept looking at the piano. I'm like, I would kill it in this band. Like I, I felt it. I'm like, I would just fucking tear it up. Like, you know, like yep. I could... I really wanted to just jump there and start jamming with them. It was like a natural connection. Yeah. But I never met them. I, I didn't meet them there. Like it was just kind of like a thing, me myself just saying that. And so then, like a few few weeks later, I think we were at a party at Bryce's, and then Toby was there. And mm -hmm. and I'm like, oh yeah, cool. You're from that band. I'm like, I'm like, dude, that band was really cool. Like I I, I almost just jumped up on stage and started jamming with you. It's like, oh, what do you play? I'm like, I play piano. It's like, are you kidding me? It's like, well, we have a, we have this gig at the Dodger Stadium for like 20,000 people, and our theme song of the whole campaign is like a piano song, and we don't have anybody. We were just gonna use backing tracks. Do you want to do it? I'm like, fuck yeah. So like, cool, yeah. you're hired. So it was like that. He didn't know how I played, if I was good or not. It was on the spot. He just said, okay. So then show up like. In a couple of days and learn these songs yeah so i spent all time like no i nailed it you know what i mean and then they're like okay cool let's go so yeah i mean i've seen some videos and i know that you're obviously playing piano but there is a couple where you're you're playing the guitar as well so yeah. it probably just depends what song it is uh, yeah. doing a bit of backing singing as well did yeah. you do any recording with the guys or was it purely just playing live no, 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 it was recorded, like, from the day one. So that day that we had that first gig, uh, we we did the gig, we did the, the thing, and then we went straight to um, uh, to the studio, Capitol Records, because 
they got some uh, they got an opportunity to write for the Transformers movie. So so we were like so we went in there and they had their background musically but didn't have technical background like I did in the studio, right? So so then we were there and I had a I had been a producer until then like for like about like what 10 years or something like that. Like seven years. So so when I was in the studio I started already kind of like helping organize the ideas, why do you do this and stuff. I started kind of connecting with them on that level. And then we recorded it. I ended up mixing the song afterwards. And yeah. then uh, uh, and then after like, we started like playing more and more. They were in a record label before me. Uh, so, so then I started to get creatively involved and in writing with them and recording. I had a little studio in North Hollywood here. So we would go there and jam all night and, and I would record everything. And yep. so then I started writing and, and, and recording, producing, mixing some of the stuff, you know, uh, and it was, and, and then I was a very, very uh, active participating part of the band, you know, of the sound. Like we, when I came came along, like we changed the sound a lot. Like I, I'm, I'm a little more pop. So we went really m more poppy, like, it was still the rock element that they had the raw thing, but it was a little more like you know like there was yeah. pop elements to it. I, I mean, I think I think the the thing that the band always had was that, that it was always rooted in rock music. However, because Toby could sing rather than just scream like a lot of rock bands, mm -hmm. it added something a bit different, and there was always a little hook, like a, a little riff or. Something that was catchy that caught your ear in each mm -hmm. song, which you don't yeah. always find. But then, you know, as you, as you saw them playing live, you know, it was very different from the recording recording in the studio to a live band. I mean, probably being a live band, they went up a level. Yeah, and that was, to be honest with you, that was always our biggest challenge. Yeah, and the reason why it was so hard. The, the recording process was so frustrating because we were never able to capture that same level of energy uh, in the studio as we did live. Live was like electricity. Like it was just fucking unbelievable. I had no doubt. One of the biggest disappointments of my life was the band breaking up because I'm like, I had no doubt we were gonna make it. Like I like if I could bet everything in my life, like I'm like, there's all the elements are there. Everything is there. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, yeah, and, I mean, what? I was going to say, myself and, and, and Tommy spoke for a bit about this. And, uh, you know, you have saying for, I, I don't know how long the band was in America before you joined them, but he was just saying, you know, f for the first couple of years, he was waking up and it was like, he was in a dream. It was like everything they were wanting to do or achieve, it, it was happening. And then it just kind of got to this point where it was like, is it, is it going to move to the next level or, or is this it? And I know there was probably problems with management was maybe the the um, the final nail in the coffin for it. But it's a shame because they, they were um, definitely something new coming out in the last 20 years that, that was a bit different. Yeah, to be honest, man, like I, uh, I, was, I, I was one of the guys that said, let's keep going let's keep going let's keep going like i wanted to keep going i have a lot of energy and i feel like we were just scratching the surface really because yeah. we started to you know what i mean but it was always like to be a hundred percent clear there was a little bit of a ego uh dynamics going on and that's what kept the band from actually growing you know what i mean so there was like one faction here another faction there one wanting to pull here and like oh my my you know what i mean so like that was frustrating the creative process and then and then people started to get a little discouraged and and then life happens you know what i mean there's so much uncertainty yeah. um, and, and, and they were living here like i was always uh, i had a green card so like i was always legal here. yeah they were on an artist visa so when they got dropped from the record label they were like Fuck, how are we gonna pay rent you know they didn't have any side jobs they could only be a musician yeah. And then Dale had a had a kid, so they were like, "Man, I gotta." He was the first one, first one to bounce, and yeah. and then we kind of tried to, you know, like there was such a like dip in our, you know, like uh, yeah. I mean, it, it did look like like they kept they did go on for a wee bit, but 
at one point it just seemed to kind of it lost something, and then it eventually kind of it, it, it died out. But do you do you still keep in touch with the guys? I know that Toby's the only one that's still in Los Angeles. Yeah. I think the rest of them but, went back. But to Toby's probably the, the one I spoke the I speak the least with. Sorry, say uh, that again. Toby's just uh, Toby's probably the one I speak the least with. Yeah. Well, maybe Dale, but. Uh, but yeah, even though he's here, like we don't really hang out. We don't really, you know what I mean? He's doing his thing, you know, like I'm, my life changed a lot. So now I have a family and stuff. So my goals are a little bit different, uh, but he's super busy. Like he has a cover band uh, in Vegas. So he's going to Vegas a lot and he's, he, he has a couple of different other projects and, and stuff. So we don't, we don't really hang out, but there's no animosity. There's no fight. You know what I mean? I love them all. Like, they're all my brothers. Yeah. And, it's, it's just, have, ju it's just what happens in life. Some, you sometimes go like that. But man, to be honest, I'm the one, probably the one that thinks this way the most. I want to see the reunion. I want to play in the reunion. I want to play more. I can I, I told, I told um, Toby, I'm like, dude, let's play the Viper Room one more time. You know that because we that we still have so much material that never got released. So many songs we wrote. And songs that I, I have mixed and ready to go, we just never released it. You know what it's I mean? It's funny because, have... what's that? Sorry, I was going to say, um, during lockdown, especially a few years ago, um, Toby, like everybody else, all a lot of musicians were doing Facebook Live just to kind of keep yourself sort of playing. And uh, jokingly, I think it used to annoy him because I would log on from Scotland to watch him. And uh, and every single time I went on, it was always the same question: When are you releasing the new other songs? You, you, you must have other songs. And he's like, "We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Eventually, it will come out." Because I know that they done a wee, they done a I think it was Lost Songs EP. It, it was something like that. Yeah, the but, last Lost Songs. I was in it. I, I was part of that one. Yeah. But but it was very amateur. It, it wasn't really done. You know what I mean? It wasn't it's like, still, but it still sounded good. Like you listen to that, and you just need to listen to the songs. You know that the, the songs have got there's something there. I agree, dude. I agree a hundred percent. I still I still feel like we have some great ones that never got released, and I yeah. feel like when I see, um, uh, you, you know, what's happening. Like I feel like a like a band with that much energy live so entertaining and and with a great singer with a great bunch of everybody had their own specific kind of thing but we yeah. gelled really, really well together like there were times that we um we wouldn't get along off stage or for whatever reason we had a fire you know like different personalities and stuff but i remember walking up like having a fight with dale for example and walking up on stage like not wanting to look at his face and the minute we stepped on stage I love them like 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 my you know what I mean like it was yeah. like yeah fuck it like I would go up to him and it was gone any animosity yeah. like the music was more powerful than anything yeah. else you know what I mean and, and that's I think that's really special and really hard to find that we yeah. had that chemistry. I, I mean Tommy had said that the the band did work well but I mean you've obviously got the the guys in the band but everybody also had a role to play off of the stage as well. Yeah. So everybody everybody was contributing their own thing to make the overall thing better. And, uh, you know, I, d I don't know what, I mean, I think Tommy was even a bit confused, like, you know, it, it should have been bigger than it was, but it must just be one of those things that happens, unfortunately. Man, it was just the fact that we gave up. For me, that's what it was. Because yeah. we had enough, because if you stop, if you're race, if you're in a marathon, and you stop, you can't say I failed, because you never actually like uh, it was gonna, it wasn't gonna work anyways. Like you gotta cross the line for you gotta keep yeah. going, and 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 the fact that life kind of happened, I understand the reasons why. I'm not bitter about that, but I'm just saying that um, we can't really tell that we didn't work out. It's just we quit, we stopped. Yeah. Well, wait and see. But um, moving on from from Jake Cartel. I know that you've got, now you can correct me if I'm wrong here, um, so have you got a band Rock Nation? Yes, Rock Nation is kind of like a, it's like a playful thing, it's not it's not something serious, but it's just, 
um, I started in, in Brazil just because just kind of playing, you know, like I was, I was missing the stage and mi missing being the front man. So we kind of put it together, just playing classic rock and just kind of cool so, stuff like that. So is that is that cover songs rather than writing original? Yes, all cover, all cover songs, pretty much. I have I have a bunch of songs written in Portuguese and in, in English as well for my own project, but I never actually followed through. Like it was just something that because I'm always constantly working with different artists and writing with them and recording and stuff. So. Um, I never took the time to go, you know what, I'm going to pursue this now, I'm going to put it out. But it's it's on my mind, like I need to release, I need to at least do something with this song. I have everything I need to to, to do so it. You know? you, with regard to music, you, you sound like you've got a lot of, you're wearing a lot of different hats. You know, you're, you're producing, you're songwriting, you're performing. Which one do you prefer out of the three? Uh... Man, when I'm on stage, like rocking out, like when, when it's like a rock show and I'm on stage, that's when I feel the most me, you know what I mean? I feel like 100% comfortable and I feel no anxiety. I, I feel like, you know, like when you're like, you're struggling with your daily life or whatever, like there's so much discomfort in your life. When I'm on stage, it's zero. Like it's like, oh. It's like this peace, this sense of like power and like inner power. Not like oh, I feel I feel like I'm the shit, but I feel I feel at ease. I feel like I'm at I'm at my purpose right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's uh, I can't deny that. You know, the life of a touring musician doesn't attract me as much anymore as I used to, being away from my family and stuff. Yeah. But but it's like a it's like a duality now because I still feel the most alive when I'm on stage. You know, yeah. And what about? I know that at the start of the year, there was the the unburdened. It was like a film project. A what? Was it was it a film project that you were working with? Fellow. A film movie project. Film. Um, no, uh, well, oh, film. A yeah, film. like uh, like I think it was called the unburdened. Uh, no, it wasn't the unburden. Uh, it, I um, well, I actually mixed because living in LA, you know what I mean. Like I've always fought, felt that uh, post production was like the the way to go if you want to make any money. You know what I mean. So like I wanted to, I wanted to uh, to get in on it. So like uh, so I started to put it out in the universe, and then I I I, I found someone that needed uh, mixing and sound design right. uh, for like it was like a pilot. It's like it's not even like. Fuck, I don't even remember the name now. But anyway, so that was like I took on that project, and that was. Uh, yeah, but I was mixing, and because I have a, I have a Netmo system here, so it's like I have a, a full 3D sound yes. system now, and uh, so I wanted to. It was like to have a new challenge, you know. So that's what I did. I'm gonna mix my second movie now coming up, like I think in in April. So it's yeah, one more hit. <laughs> So is that is that quite exciting? Like that's something a bit different. It's uh yeah, it's uh, it's cool because it's a challenge. It's and it's like, uh, it's something new. I mean, I I still like music better. You know, like like music's still my thing. But but man, uh, with all the different jobs I could have had, you know, all the other day jobs or whatever, like I'd rather be in my studio, like creating and yeah. you know, like. Yeah, I would imagine it's probably a lot more fun than working in a grocery shop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I've done all that, man. I've done all that. Everything I needed to do to stay in L.A. and to still yeah. pursue my dreams, I did. I did it all, and I'll do it again. And now for my family, mm -hmm. I'll do it. I'll drive Uber. Sometimes I still do. I don't yeah. care. You know, if we're broke this month, there's no not many clients, let's go driving. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't care, you know, but, but always... I just got I just got a job uh, offer right now. They flew me out to Fort Wayne and was gonna pay me like ten grand a month and uh, at least you know what I mean like so it was good stability and everything. But I wasn't gonna be in LA. I was gonna be completely out of the loop and right. and I'm like no man. I, I'll choose to struggle here because I feel like here I'm 
I'm in the place that I should be. You know what I mean? Like I belong yeah. here. There's so many creative people. It's, uh, LA is the beautiful. Like I love LA. You know? I've o I've only ever been once, and it was probably twenty years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! It was the golden years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, all I remember was the whiskey and the Viper rumors across the road. <laughs> oh, cool. Were Were we playing when when you came? No, no, no. This was lot. Uh, this I think this was before. Like Duke Cartel would have either still been, they would have been still in Australia. No, 12 years ago, that was 2012. No, no, not 12 years ago, it would have been 19 years ago. Oh shit, okay, yeah, yeah. so yeah. Yeah, wow. So it was a while ago. But uh, AJ, we've been obviously quite um, serious with lots of serious questions and bits and pieces, so before we end things, we're going to... I'm going to ask you some fun questions. Sure. Okay. So, imagine you could go back in time and you could attend any concert. Which wow. concert would you love to have attended that that you didn't manage to? Well, I had. Well, my biggest frustration is going to be an easy one. Was uh, when I was 13, I had tickets to go see Bon Jovi. I think it was 87, 88. It was that the high? It was like. Slippery When Wet or like New Jersey tour. It was like, yeah. he was like, John was insane. I had the tickets, my my um, uh, my uh, my aunt was gonna take me and she broke her leg the right. week off. She couldn't take me. And I was like, <laughs> I was sitting there like, man, I, like, I was so, I cried, I screamed. I'm like, I tried to get anybody else to get, to take me, but they wouldn't take me. So that, that was the, that was the one that hurt the most, you know? Yeah. But I would have loved to, to have seen um, uh, Paul McCartney too. Like, I mean, he's still alive. I, I might still see him. But Paul McCartney, Elton John, you know, there's so many uh, I didn't get to see, you know? Yeah. And uh, obviously you play piano, you mm -hmm. sing, play the guitar. Is there a musical instrument you wish that you could play that you don't? Yeah, I wish I played guitar better. I wish I played <laughs> drums. Drums is fucking so much fun, you know. Like, I, I, I just wish like if I had I known better, I would spend less time doing stupid all this shit like karate and jujitsu and chasing after girls. You know what I mean? Like, I spend so much time just doing that. Uh, yeah. It took so much of my focus. Like, if I could just sit my ass down and learn multiple instruments, like I still have, I can, I can play bass. I can play a little of that. Yeah. But like not deep enough. Like I wish I would just kill it at everything, you know? Like Yeah. Now you think, AJ, that there's millions of great songs that have been written across the years by different artists. What's the one song that you wish that you could have been sat in the recording studio watching it be recorded? Oh shit. Uh so many beautiful songs, man. Uh I would love to sit, uh, not that it's the most beautiful song, but I would love to sit uh, at a Radiohead session, like just kind of vibing with like, you know what I mean? Because I feel like it's so organic, which mm -hmm. resembles the way uh, me and the guys, you know, at, at, um, at Joe Cartel, like uh, it was just a lot of jamming, a lot of vibing and stuff. I felt like, I feel like that would be a, a fun one. Even though, like, yeah. they seem really mean and depressed or whatever, <laughs> but like, but musically, I think it's like one of the most interesting bands. But now I'm really into um, Jacob Collier. Like, I'm just flipping out on him. And actually, like, you, you, are you from Scotland or Ireland? Scotland. Well, you know Louis Capaldi. Yeah. He, for, for me, like, melody-wise, like, top line, like, I don't, I don't see anybody better than that guy. Like, that guy is just like unbelievable you know yeah so so Louis Capaldi is he lives through Glasgow way the city of Glasgow so that's probably 20 minutes 25 minutes from oh, wow. myself that's so cool but what, do you, uh, do you I, have, I, have any encounter what do you think about him do you like it do you like him I I don't he seems like a really really nice guy um mm -hmm. His music is not for me. It's too, it's too pop, too pretty. Yeah, yeah. But there's no denying that he can write a good song, and he's got some voice on him as well. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's just not my type of music. Yeah. But he is extremely loved in Scotland, and I—I I mean, his music is obviously extremely popular. But I, I think he's actually he's more liked in Scotland for the type of person that he is. Whenever you see him in an interview, he's really funny, Bell and he comes Taylor. across as a genuinely nice person. Yeah. And yeah. I think that I think there's people that love him that have never listened to his music, which is unusual. Because because you know it, it, it like what what I think we lack right now in, in this time time and age is like positive role models you know what i mean so our idols need to stop being assholes you know what i mean and i feel like that's what he is like he's like an approachable positive uh idol you know and i think that that's really cool really important yeah i mean i know a couple of people that that have um, worked with him um kind of before it before he became extremely famous so when he was on when he was up and coming People that worked with him, and they said he, he couldn't be, couldn't have been nicer. He was such a nice guy. Yeah. And then, I mean, you see the songs he's writing, though. I mean, he's extremely talented as well. Yeah, that's the thing. What I like about him is that I have my rock and roll side because, like, you know, like I, I love the, that feeling. But I'm a very deep person. Like you can't really tell, like just by you know, like first conversation. If meet me at, my, at a party. You would not imagine that I'm that deep, but he touches on subjects and the way he, uh, it's not even, like, for me, it's not only about what kind of song, it's how deep he goes into the core, the message of the song, you know what I mean? Yeah. So like, it, it's unassumingly, like you can't really tell from just like, like, but if you, if you actually sit to listen to the, to the lyrics and stuff, I feel like he, he nails the emotional, like, you know what I mean? When I first heard the song, like, it was like about a, a mother-son kind of relationship. And since I live away from my mom and stuff. And it was just so beautiful. Like I started crying like a baby, you know, because yeah. the mo the message, he goes deep. And, and, and I relate a lot to him that he's the soul of the party. He's like that, ah, you know, the, the cool guy that everybody laughs at and stuff. But inside, like you can't really tell, you know what I mean? But he's yeah. so fucking deep. And I relate I to that. I think he, I think he's well loved in Scotland as well because Scot Scotland is such a small country. Very rarely does someone find success that's that they manage to break outside of Scotland. Yeah. You know, there's people that are successful, but it's only within Scotland. So it's almost like everybody feels like they're kind of hoping that he does well because yeah. they, it's good to see someone from your country. Do that. well across the world. Representing. Yeah. It's like Brazil. Hey, last, que last question for you, AJ. Go ahead. So Mount Rushmore. Who is the four musicians or bands for yourself that you think are perfection? Um man, um my favorite drummer for different reasons, I don't know why, but like my favorite drummer of all time is Stuart Cop Copland. Uh, I love the way he's just playful and and and, and young and you know what I mean. Like I love Stuart Cop mm -hmm. Copland. Uh, bass. There needs to be a, a like a band. Like do you want me to do like a line? Just like a, a just a, a musician or a band. Who are the who are the four that you just think? Whether it be songwriting, whether it be performing, whether it be the overall package. Who are the four bands or musicians that you, you yeah. just think they are perfection? Uh, well, um. Songwriting wise, Beatles. Um, uh, longevity and impact in the world, U2. Uh, um, performer and, and, and cool, like, specialness, like Elvis. Uh, yeah. Very, I'm, I'm very weird. And musician, musician wise, like, just kind of like master. Of everything and just like another level genius is Jacob Collier, no, no doubt. There you go, AJ. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure meeting you and speaking to you, of learning course. a little bit about yourself. Yeah, and, I want to. Uh, well, can, can can I ask you one question? Yes. How before we end? How did you uh, uh, get to um, 
find out about Duke Cartel? Like, what was your, like, how did you <coughs> came across? How did you come across? Well, I actually spoke with, with Tommy about this. So what had happened was I actually looked this up online before speaking to him to get my dates correct. <laughs> so in 2006, mid to late 2006, Toby had appeared on Rockstar Supernova. Supernova, yeah. The, the TV show. But it didn't air in Scotland until the, the following year, 2007. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the time, I, I, I was watching it. I'd watched it, it, it from the previous year when they'd done Rockstar in excess. They were, in excess it was the same format in excess. We're looking for a singer. Yeah. Uh, so I liked the show the previous year. Because I'm a big rock guy, you know, this is it. Three big rock stars are looking for a singer, so I thought I'll watch this again. And uh, obviously, you get the people that you you like their performances. So um, Toby being one of them, and it was when he got the opportunity to showcase one of his original songs, and he he, he done a Duke Cartel song. Yeah. And obviously, it was extremely catchy. So I was like. I oh, like that oh, song. Oh, 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 I see the that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, what I'd say to Tommy was, back then, I don't... The internet wasn't what it was just now. Like, Facebook had, had just came out, but yeah. I wasn't on Facebook. Like, social media wasn't really a thing. I think there was maybe MySpace, or... There was MySpace. Was, or there was, I think, Duke Cartel. It was either MySpace, or they had maybe an early website, I don't really remember, but you had, they'd released a, a three three or four song EP. It was like the black one, it had like three songs on it. Mm. And you had to, I had to contact them direct to to buy it yeah. because you couldn't order it online. Uh, yeah. So I had contacted them and I think that's how I got in touch with Toby because I got the EP, and then obviously a couple of years later they got signed and they released an album which you could then buy online and stuff like that. So, and then when social media, Facebook and that came around, I had kind of contacted Toby, and we weren't really friends, but we kind of kept in touch, like the odd message every couple of years. <laughs> and it was pretty much that, that was the case. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm glad, thank you for, uh for researching and stuff and, and, and getting in touch. This is, it means a lot to me, man, because uh, I feel like we had something something special. I, I've always had a lot of love for the Duke Cartel fans that came before me. Yeah. And the ones I got, uh, we toured Australia, we had one tour in Australia. The, the ones I got to meet and experience, they always treated me, they always welcomed me so well. And, and I have nothing but love for the Duke Cartel family. And, and who knows, man, I'm, I'm still here. like. If you throw some yeah. campaign to re reunite the guys, I'll be the first one in line, man. I'm, well, I'm still fingers here. Fingers crossed. We'll, we'll maybe see. We'll maybe see some live recordings. I've, I've, um, I've spoke with Tommy. I've st still to arrange a date and a time with Toby, and I've got J Bro coming on in a couple of weeks' time. Mm -hmm. So I've spoke to. Uh, I'll eventually, I will have spoke to all four of them. So. Yeah. Um, let's see what let's see what Toby's gonna say because you know he's he's the one that has the most going right now you know. But, yeah, uh, everybody's got their own thing on the go, but um, never say never. But thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, and, and we'll keep in touch. And uh, I look forward to everything else that you've got going on uh, down the line as well. Yes, please keep in touch. Like uh, I'll I'll keep you guys posted, and hopefully one day I'll release my own shit. You know what I mean? Like it's <laughs> yeah. way overdue. You know? Yeah. Right, AJ. I'll see you later on. Okay.